Okay, now shut up and listen, fellow uh, Toastmasters. Shut up and listen is not the most empathetic way to start uh, giving somebody feedback. But we all learn that uh, because we practice giving feedback a lot. Uh, but receiving feedback is a whole other story. And in fact, shutting up and listening is very good for receiving feedback. I would like to persuade you tonight to develop your skills in receiving feedback. And I will be doing that by telling you a little bit about the phases that I went through in receiving feedback and, and how I think I, I developed that and how I'm still developing because it's, it's a never-ending quest, of course. You can always get better. And basically the three stages I went through are uh, first, just listening. That's the shut up part. Because uh, listening you do with your ears and not with your mouth. Um, then, only then, you, the next phase is to ask clarifying questions, so you get more quality feedback. And the third level, and that's the master level, is to put yourself, really put yourself in the shoes of the person who is giving you feedback. So the first step, shutting up and listening. Now, when we get feedback, we take it personally, and there is no way around it, that you, you just have to find the urge to take it personally. Uh, normally, our instinct, instinct, while we are getting feedback, is to come up with defenses, to come up with excuses, and um, this doesn't help because it distracts us from actually hearing what the other person is saying and to, to find things that we could consider for improvement. So, if you tell yourself, okay, I'm just going to listen and not say anything afterwards, you free yourself up to just receive all these nuggets of potentially good information. So, and the second step is to ask clarifying questions. And you really have to first master the art of just listening, because otherwise your questions will be defensive. So to give you an example, if somebody comes to me and says, well, you should improve your vocal variety, I could ask the question saying, well, don't you think this is my natural voice? That would be defensive. A good question would be, how do you think I can improve my vocal variety? And could you give some examples? So that's, those are the kinds of questions that will bring you more value. You get more information. Now, the third point is to really step into the shoes of the person who's giving you feedback. And a little background to this. So, your point of view is formed by your knowledge, your experience, and your thoughts. And the other person's point of view is formed by their knowledge, their experience, and their thoughts. And they only overlap a little bit, if at all. So, you have a lot of potential to learn from the other person, because they've got something that you don't have. And this is where the very valuable, uh, potentially invaluable feedback is, is uh, coming from. So, trying to really put yourself in the other person's shoes, to see things from their perspective, and then trying to find the strength in their argument, and from their perspective, the weaknesses in yours on your weaknesses, and you can adapt some of their strengths. If you are serious, and I hope you are, about doing something very valuable with all of the feedback that you're receiving at Toastmasters, 
but not only at Toastmasters, in daily life, because you get feedback all the time. Don't take it personally, of course. Try not to. First, just listen. Then get a little bit more value out of what the other person is saying, being empathetic to them by asking clarifying questions. That way you're showing that you value their opinion. And the master level is really put yourself into their shoes. And this is the most difficult bit, and then that will take some time, but I'm sure you know, you, being here, you, you're all you know, willing to do that. So, now I'm open for feedback. Thank you. <laughs>